Kristen with Flowers and Fancies, and I'm going to take you through how to put together our spring DIY simple centerpiece. Uh, this can be used for a dining room table or for a coffee table, and it's going to be hydrangea based, and we're going to have some beautiful spring flowers on top. First thing you'll receive in your bucket that you want to pull out is your Lariope grass, and this is um, long lasting grass. And we're going to use it to swirl around in our container to give it a little bit extra interest and appeal. You can use as much or as little as you want. I usually use about five stems. I curl it around in my hand like this. You might want to run your hand over it a couple of times to get it to go in the direction that you want it to. Go around and around and then just put it right down into your face. Now if you don't like the look of this, you can skip this option. Hang on to these greens to use later in your design or just put them off to the side and use them somewhere else in your home. And the first flowers I'm going to separate out are the hydrangea. And with your bucket, you're going to receive a piece of raffia wire. And we use this here for all kinds of things. It really is an excellent tool to have. It's a nice fine gauge wire, so it's easy to work with. Um, and it is coated in raffia so that it doesn't rust as easily um, in water and it's easier on your hands. We're gonna take our two hydrangea and we're gonna clean some of these larger petals off, or um, leaves off, like so. And if you have any pretty leaves that are attached close to the bloom, you can leave those on. And then if you have any wilted petals or any brown spots, just pull those off. Just go through and groom your stems before you use them. And you'll receive two of these. We're going to tie them together to create a base that all the rest of our flowers are going to sit on. So we're going to take them in our hands, kind of shake them out a little bit. You'll notice that the stem comes up and then you'll have all of these lateral stems coming off. So you're going to shake them out a little bit and then we're going to press these together. Once they're together in your hand and the stems are together, just kind of Move them around to get them to be generally round. You're kind of making a little bouquet in your hand. You can kind of blend those lateral pieces together so that it's a little bit more homogenous. And you're gonna take your piece of raffia wire, go right around where your hand is holding it above your hand. You can hold it in place with your pointer finger. You're gonna go around once and twice, and then pull it nice and tight off to one side and twist it like you're twisting a twist tie, a bag of bread. So you'll end up with something like this. Okay. You want to trim your excess. You're going to need a pair of strong scissors, clippers, or kitchen scissors. Um, if you do not have one, they are available in the add-on section with our DIY bucket. And then we're going to trim our stems, measure to our container, place them in. Now, if you find that when you put these in, the stems hit the bottom of the base and it kind of wiggles around, then you can take them out and trim them a little bit more. You always want to air on the longer side because obviously you can't put the stem back on once you've cut it. So trim it once after you've measured it to your base, and then if it's a little bit too long, you can trim a little bit more and a little bit more, maybe by a centimeter at a time. But you want it to sit down on top of it, kind of like a muffin. You want the, um, the flower blooms to sort of go over the side of the base so you don't see the actual top of the base. So just kind of massage it, move the lateral blooms around, and spread it out over the top of the base. These lateral blooms that are coming out from this main stem in the center are kind of coming out in like radial, like a radial direction. So it's sort of accomplishing, um, like if you were going to tape a base to put your flowers into it, we're doing it naturally by just using the formation of the hydrangea bloom. The next thing that we're going to put in is our mini green hydrangea. That is these guys right here. I love to mix the hydrangea shapes and colors uh, just because it gives you a nice texture on the base. Um, we are using it as the base of the arrangement, but we still want to see a little bit of it because the hydrangea are pretty. So the mini greens kind of sitting up on top of the white hydrangea gives a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture but it also allows you to see some of the hydrangea while filling in some of the holes from the base of the hydrangea. So we're gonna do the same thing and take some of these leaves off. If they're super pretty and you wanna leave them on, and you can kind of see in your hand, if you pull it like this, 
that's what it's gonna sort of look like when you put it into the um, hydrangea. If you like that look, you can leave them on um, or just kind of pick the ones that you wanna leave on and take the others off. Just edit the stem to be what you want it to look like. It is nice to have a cleaner stem and remove some of these leaves too because the leaves are also competing with the bloom to drink up the water from the vase. So the fewer leaves, the more water makes it up to the bloom, which is a good way to keep them lasting longer. And of course, anything that's gonna come in on the stem, you wanna clean that off because you don't want it to be down in the water, which will only increase bacteria production and make your water mucky and make your flowers last less long. So I'm gonna put these in and I'm gonna measure again and see this is kind of, it's not holding its place where I want it. So I'm gonna take it out and trim it again. There you go. Okay, this is a little bit better. Adjusting my leaves and placing it in there so it just kind of sits on top of the white hydrangea that we've already placed in. And do the same thing with this one. And while you're designing, make sure you're trimming off any of these little knobs on the side where the leaves were coming off before because the cleaner your stem is, the easier it is to put it into your arrangement and then also remove it from the arrangement. So as you're measuring, let's say you put this in and it's like sticking way out and you don't like it, then you go to take it out and one of these little nubs pulls, it's gonna pull everything out. So we want to avoid that. We're gonna keep our stems as clean as possible. I'm doing the same thing with this one. You can trim on an angle, it increases the surface area for the water to come up the stem, which is always a good thing drink a little bit more. I don't do it all the time because I always <laughs> forget, but a good fresh cut at an angle will do wonders for your flower longevity. The next thing I'm coming in with is some of the greens. Sometimes I'll refer to the greens as foundational greens or decorative greens or finishing greens. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the, uh, it's called salau or lemon leaf. Again, a really nice long lasting green. So I'm going first. You're gonna have like four or five stems of this. Some of them come, you know, like one single stem, and sometimes they come more branchy. So you want to separate them down into the individual pieces if you do happen to have any branchy ones. And you're gonna to want to take off all of the little bits and leaves that you're not using. So for our arrangement, we really only need like the top three or four of the um, of the salal leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and take these little nubby bits off too with my clippers because again these will go in and grab onto your flowers when you pull it out if you want to readjust it it just pulls the entire arrangement apart. I'm going to clean those off and any weird pieces like this you want to have a nice clean straight stem to work with. I'm going to clean up all my bits. There we go. And then I'm going to put these in the same way that I was putting in my green hydrangea sort of at an angle, and again, measure where you want it to go. You want these bottoms of the stems to come in that bottom third of your um, glass vase so that you don't have to worry about if you forget to water it, you know, them ending up out of water. So I'm gonna put these in, I'm gonna go in between my hydrangea. I'm gonna really put them wherever, but I'm going into this bottom portion of the arrangement. Our flowers are gonna end up sitting kind of up on top of it. So we're using the hydrangea to help hold our greens and we're using the greens to help fill in our base of hydrangea. So I've got my greens all the way around. And then the next thing I'm going to come in with is my rose. The roses are not particularly spring flower. I mean, they're available all the time, but um, they're super long lasting and they fill in so nicely with the other flowers. We like to start with sort of a base of our roses and our spray roses to sort of get the shape and the size and the color scheme that we're going for. And then we're gonna come back in with our, um, our bulb flowers and our spring flowers. So these are called Kahala roses and we love them. They are a nice sort of like in-betweeny garden rose. They have lots of really pretty ruffles and the color goes really nicely with everything. It's kind of a peachy coral. So I'm gonna start by putting them in at an angle around the bottom in three. So you'll receive five in your bucket. You're gonna do three of them around the base, kind of the same way that we were putting those greens in at an angle. So it's gonna crisscross with the hydrangea and the greens. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick off any of these outside petals. These are called shipping petals. 
and you can work your fingers sort of around in the direction of the petals or just give a little blow right in the center to sort of encourage opening. Take off any greens that are going to end up in the water and then go ahead and place it in. Again, we're going to do a triangle, crisscrossing our stems underneath, making sure that our stems are nice and clean before we put them into the arrangement. You'll notice that all of these woodier stems, like with the roses, have these really big kind of like knobs from where the leaves or where um, smaller blooms have been trimmed off of them. And we don't want any of those to go in on our stems. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And when you put them into your arrangement, you put them in so that they're just kind of resting their bottoms on the hydrangea. You don't want to like push them all the way in um, because we want to allow them to continue to open, which they will do in your base. The next two I'm going to put in on top. So we've made a hydrangea in this lower middle area and these two I'm going to put in right up top here. Taking out my little nub, make sure my stems are nice and clean. Sometimes I'll twist it a little bit just to get it to go in. Um, you don't want to like force it because you could break one of the pieces of the hydrangea. And then once you've broken the piece of the hydrangea, then that little floral cluster at the end of it will start to wilt because it won't be getting water and you'll notice it, little pieces starting to die in your arrangement. So you want to take it easy, work around what's already there. These we're cutting them a little bit longer because we're going to set them on top of the arrangement like this. And we're kind of wheeling them in any ugly petals. Okay, so now we're gonna see our flowers all the way around and then we have these two that are gonna kind of take the color through the arrangement for us so that we're not just like, seeing them on the outside, we see them through the top of the arrangement. So we're gonna come in with our spray roses and I'm doing this because again they're very delicate little individual blooms but the, the cluster um, takes up a lot of space so I'm gonna do three of these. I'm gonna do them in between my three roses that I put in first in the triangle. And you really gonna wanna clean these up pretty, pretty well. Um, these are super adorable, but we don't want them to go into our arrangement. So I'm gonna clean off these stems and get it to a workable cluster at the top. You don't need them to all be right at the same size. It's nature, it kind of does a little bit of the, the textural in and out for you on the stem here. So let it do the work. Don't be too fussy with it. Just take the ones off that are definitely going to get in the way of going into your arrangement. And then make sure you're cleaning your stem really well again. Kind of get a measurement. And trim conservatively, and I'm going to go in between these two right here. I'm going to just let my blooms sort of tuck in and hover. So I have a little bit of movement to them. And then I'm going to come in right between these two with the next. things. So in your bucket, it's, it's going to change um, depending on what we have available. Um, so you're going to get five stems of either a tulip or, or um, a tulip or a daffodil. So you might get three and two or all three of one or all five of one. Um, but tulips and daffodils are going to be um, grouped together and you'll see five stems of those. Now for the tulips, I'm gonna put these in so that they're going in the direction that they're facing. I'm not gonna to try to manipulate them to go a different direction. They will start to grow um, in the direction of light and they'll grow out of your arrangement as well. So if you wanna tuck them in a little bit tight now, you can. Um, I like to just kind of put them where I want them right from the get-go and let them sort of grow and develop how they're going to because I think that it's kind of pretty and natural how they break out from the arrangement and sort of follow the sun. Um, but that's going to be a matter of personal taste for you. Um, I don't like to, again, over clean these stems because I think that part of the prettiness of the tulip is that it has this really nice, fresh green, crisp color. It's like so springy. So I'm only going to take that bottom leaf off because it's going to get in the way of me putting my flower into the vase. But I'm going to keep as much of this as I can. Obviously remove any parts of the leaf that might be damaged. I come right on in, in between flowers here. And I'm going to have my uh, bloom kind of hovering again, sort of outside of the rest of my flowers, and it will continue to grow. If you would rather do it a little bit smaller, keep it a little bit shorter, you can do that too. It will start to grow out. 
you can tuck it in a little bit more, but I kind of like it there and I'd like to be able to see that green. It helps fill in with the greens that we're using. hyacinth and they come with some of these greens on the stem um, sometimes when the hyacinth is a little bit underdeveloped um, the greens are stuck to it tighter and you can actually use them in the arrangement uh, once the hyacinth has grown this much the greens sort of fall off and they do contribute to the water getting kind of mucky and sometimes they hold some soil or dirt down in it, so I always take them off. I find that it's much easier to use the hyacinth without those greens on it. And then we're gonna trim, and then it's like a little bit slimy, so make sure you have my sharp scissors, okay? And I'm gonna go in, since I have three of them, one, two, three, just kind of right on top of where my, um, my first set of roses were, because I wanna see these up in the arrangement, see? Like the beauty of these bulb flowers in springtime is partially the stem and that you have this really cool bloom like sort of hovering on a nice clean stem so you want to use that instead of pushing them all the way down in there now these are going to continue to grow too so if you're more comfortable now pushing them a little bit further in because you know that they're going to grow out a little bit you can do that as well um i'm just going to go ahead and place them where i like them and then you can always go back and pull them out re-trim them and put them back in you will notice though um over time as you are hyacinth grows, the stem becomes softer. So it is more difficult to cut and it is more difficult to take out and replace. So if you can get it where you want it and leave it be, that's the way to go. Put this guy in here. And now we're starting to insert our stems less this way and more straight in because we want them to be able to stand up and to be able to see them. So we're just gonna tuck that in there. And then kind of twist it so it goes where you want it just as you go, so I can see my three going around here. You can see that all the way through. Just miss that little. Okay. And then you're gonna receive three blooms of either ranunculus or anemone. Um, these are kind of similar flowers. I'll show you both of them. So the anemone doesn't really require any cleaning at all on the stems. They come nice and clean. Ranunculus, however, will come with these little side shoots and stuff on them that are super cute. And if you wanted to use them in a bud vase um, displayed by themselves, I usually leave them on because I think they're, they're really whimsical and pretty. Um, but in a mixed arrangement like this, I would clean them all off so that you're left with a nice clean stem. And these kind of grow and do weird things too. You might notice that, you know, your stem is a little crazy looking. These are actually all pretty straight, but they definitely want to kind of curve in a direction. So again, I'm not going to work against them, trying to force them to go away that I don't like. I want to appreciate that stem shape. And I'm going to put them in so that they also kind of hover. Because I think that it just, you know, it reminds me of them actually coming up out of the ground, you know? So you get this like really pretty bloom just sort of hovering above everything. And I'll show you with two of each. Um, so this is another anemone here, and you can see this one kind of shaped like this, right? So I'm going to put it in so that it sort of fills in and hovers right here above above my roses. You want it to be a little bit wild. And if you're working with ranunculus, you can you know, give it a little bit of a fluff to get them to start opening. And go ahead and put that in. So that, again, the bloom is hovering above your flowers. And you can see a little bit of that stem holding it there. Like that's really the, the beauty of it. And then you're gonna get three billy balls, which are really kind of like every season. I love billy balls. They're just so fun and happy and they just go really well with these flower types. Again, you can um, show off a little bit of the stem and let them sort of hover and bounce around in your arrangement because it just makes it a little bit more fun. It goes really nicely with those peach roses as well. So I'm going to do one kind of sticking out. I'm going to place one more in the middle down in and one over here sticking out. So it's a little bit asymmetrical. Getting a little bit of that asymmetrical balance. If you want to keep yours more in a triangle, go for it. That looks nice also. But I wanted to make sure I had one sunken down a little bit more so that you can see a couple of layers. If you're looking at it at eye level, a couple of layers of the yellow in my arrangement. And the last thing that we're going to add is our finishing greens. Oops, I'm going to get this in and make this easier. Okay. And our finishing greens I mentioned we have Israeli Ruscus, which is a 
a linear green. And we're gonna clean it again like we did with the Salal to just to the top, the part that we wanna use. But we're gonna leave a little bit more on it than we did with the Salal because we wanna let this stick out a little bit. So you have a nice clean stem and the amount of the green that you want. Again, be conservative. You can always take more leaves off, can't put them back on. So I'm gonna come right in here. And my goal for these greens is to sort of fill in this up space and create lines. So kind of like following the lead of where the tulip um, foliage is or where the hyacinths are sticking out, my other linear flowers, I'm just gonna let it fill in in between them. And then our sword fern, same deal. We're going to clean to the part that we want to use. We're going to leave this a little bit long also because this is going to stick out and again create space and movement. It is a different shape than everything else in here, so you're really going to um, want it to be seen. Your eyes are going to be drawn to it, so you need to use it effectively. You don't want to tuck the thing down in there and then you don't see it at all. So I'm going to come right in between, same as I was doing with my Israeli ruscus. I'm going to go right in there and let it come out. So you see that really pretty fresh spring green color. Now, if you didn't want to put your grass down in your, um, your vase, now you could use it to just sort of decorate in through your flowers. So if you hold on to maybe like a couple of stems on the side, maybe use three in your vase for decoration, and then you maybe have, you know, five or six left over like this, then you could use them in your in your vase arrangement as well. Um, so I only have two left over because I put most of mine in here, but um, what you want to do is use those groups because I feel like when you just put one in, they sort of look like whiskers. So with whatever you have left over, group them as twos and hold them together in your hands and trim them to the length that you think you're going to want them going into your vase, like this. Then I'm gonna put one over here, just for fun. I'm gonna put them in together. So if you're using all of your Liriope grass in the arrangement rather than in the vase, try to keep them grouped together as you go through me, like in groups of twos and threes. And that just looks a little bit more purposeful and a little bit less random, right? Um, and if you do kind of spread them out like one, two, three, four, or five, it starts to look really sort of like forced and not natural. Um, so I would I try to group them together while you're using them. Or you could just use all of them down in the base and make it a little bit more um, full in the decoration here. The only problem with this is when you go to change your water, a lot of times it pulls the grass out too. So you have to kind of be aware of that. So what you're gonna do to change your water, by the way, is take your hands, go up underneath of your flowers and rest those little that little muffin top that we created with our hydrangea, rest it on the back of your hands and then gently lift it up so that my hands are above the base now and they are cinching in on the stems. Not too much, they don't wanna smush your flowers. And then I'm gonna pull those out. And you can see my grass is pulling out with it. So you want to separate it from your grass. And you're going to, if you have a spare hand and you can, grab your snips and give everything a fresh cut that you can get to. This is not mandatory, but it does help keep your uh, flowers going for a bit longer. And then you want to take this, dump your water out, refill it with fresh water, re-swirl your grass in there, and then you're going to pop this right back in the middle with your clean water, and you're good to go. And you want to do that probably every two days. Obviously, if you see that the water is getting murky ahead of that schedule, change it. Clean water is the way to keep your flowers living and looking good for as long as possible. And these bulb flowers put out some, like, slimy stuff from their stems in the water, so it might get a little murky faster than maybe like a rose vase or something like that that you, you've had in your house before. So keep an eye on it, and if you notice that it's getting kind of dark or icky, change that water. Um, and even if it looks pretty clean, change it anyway every two days because that's going to keep these going. So do your final adjustments, give it a spin, give it a look, and then display it where you like and enjoy them. Enjoy their growth, enjoy their color, and enjoy the spring. Thanks. Thanks for watching. For more inspiration and availability, visit flowersandfancies.com or call 410-653-0600 and follow along with us on Instagram and Facebook.